Good morning, everybody. How we doing? Let us know if you got any trick or treaters last night um, and how that was. Our neighborhood was was hopping with families. So that was pretty it's pretty cool to see all these uh, families getting out and doing stuff together. Um, so let us know how you're doing this morning. We're going to look at John 1, starting at verse 43. We're going to go to verse 51. So that's the end of the first chapter of John. So it's been seven days of devotions. We've gone through one chapter of John. If you're just joining today, you can still catch up. You can keep going through the entire gospel of John with us. We'd love that. So let us know how you're doing. Let us know if you had a, a lot of trick-or-treaters, not many, how your night was. Maybe it was no different than any other night. So um, my son Judah, he's 14 months. He dressed up as a lion to be the lion of, of Judah. I thought that was pretty cool. And then Nora's into princess stuff. So she she was Cinderella. So they had fun with that. Good morning, everybody. I see people joining now. So we'll get started here in a moment. Um, in this text, yesterday, what, what was read was uh, Jesus calling some disciples. And today we're looking at this Nathaniel who's hearing about Jesus because Jesus is starting to gather those followers as a rabbi. And Nathaniel's got a problem, and it's a common problem in that day. And it's because for rabbis, you you followed them, you dedicated a lot of your life to them if you were going to follow a rabbi uh, and be one of their disciples. So you wanted to follow a good one. And it was almost this sort of status battle um, to see what kind of rabbi you followed and who, where they were from. So when Nathaniel is hearing about this incredible rabbi, Jesus, but then here's where he's from, that's where his problem comes in because he he's dismissive of Jesus before he even talks to him because of where Jesus is from. All right, so let's let's read this text. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth. I mean, come on, nothing good comes from Nazareth. It's, it's a small, poor place. Nobody important. Nobody influential has ever been from Nazareth. That's, that's his attitude. How wrong he was. How wrong he was. Philip just says, come and see. I don't, I don't have to explain it to you. If, if you see it, you're going to understand it. You're going to believe it. So um, everyone in, in Jerusalem looks down at people uh, north of Jerusalem, like Galilee. And even within Galilee, people look down on certain parts um, like Nazareth. Okay, There's just this pecking order in their world. Just like you know, we see that in different ways today. There's a pecking order in our world. So what's Nathaniel's problem? He's an intellectual snob. Okay, He's an intellectual snob. And you know, there's nothing... If you really want to absorb wisdom, there's nothing more fatal to wisdom and good ideas than dismissiveness. I just imagine if that dismissiveness here for Nathaniel caused him to just end the conversation. If Philip didn't say, come and see, he never would have met Jesus and had this incredible experience that we're about to read about. So dismissiveness is the the fatal enemy to wisdom. Um, and, and we do that too, right? We, we look down on people who live on the other side of the tracks, so to speak. Um, or we, we maybe sneer at people who might be considered above us too. So um, this is a good mini lesson for us within this story. Uh, if you really want to be wise, uh, you know, the word of God is our ultimate source of wisdom. And if we're soaking in the word of God, then we have a lens to see everything else and discern everything else in this world. So 
Let's read on. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Whoa, what a what a pivot for Nathanael, right? From saying Nazareth to you're the Son of God. You're the King of Israel, okay? Uh, Nathanael jumps in quick because Jesus has done something miraculous. Okay, we don't exactly know what Nathanael was, was doing under the fig tree or, or saying or, or whatever, but Jesus miraculously knew. And he shows that power to Nathanael and he's blown away. And now he's all in, okay? Uh, so he's gone from all out to all in. He clearly is searching, okay? He's a skeptic and that's why he was dismissive. But underneath skepticism for people, there is spiritual searching okay that's that's what's underneath skepticism there's it's insecurity okay so at the bottom of the denial of the existence of god in our world and the resistance to jesus christ as savior there's oftentimes that insecurity and that skepticism underneath it is spiritual searching okay so it's it's that way for people who deny jesus today too and Nathaniel was probably struggling with a lot of questions that a lot of Israelites were struggling with in that day. Um, like, why were they under the boot of Rome? And who should they look to for deliverance? You know, who was this Messiah? When was he going to show up? It had been a long time uh, since this prophecy. So was he going to show up? Lots of skepticism, understandably so. Um, maybe even wondering, are we still God's chosen people? So. Of course, he's going to be skeptical when someone comes along and says, hey, he's here. But at the same time, he so wants to find the answers to those questions. When Jesus shows him just a glimpse, he's all in. It's really interesting. Let's read on. Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you. You will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. What's Jesus talking about here? He's talking about a vision. Okay, he's talking about a vision, and that is Jacob's ladder that we see in the Old Testament. Here's a, a picture, an artistic rent, not a picture, an artistic rendering of Jacob's ladder. And what Jacob's ladder is, is it's a bridge between heaven and earth, right? And Jesus says, you're going to see these angels descending, this, this bridge between heaven and earth on the Son of Man. What Jesus is saying to Nathaniel, uh, and he knows Nathaniel's an intellectual, so maybe he can figure this out. Jesus is the bridge between God and man, okay? Jesus is the bridge between heaven and earth, and He's not revealed how he's going to accomplish that. He's going to accomplish that by taking the sins of man with him on the cross and then rising from the dead. Um, but Jesus isn't just going to throw down the Roman oppressors. He, he's going to punch a hole in the wall that separates God from man. And so even though seekers and skeptics start their search sort of afraid of disappointment, that's where Nathaniel starts. Jesus promises he will be infinitely more than anyone's looking for. He says, you, you like this little miracle I showed you? Just wait. You're going to see me blow a hole between heaven and earth to cut the distance out, to cut the barriers out between God and man. So a couple things here in this story. You know, if you're someone who has tough questions or maybe has been afraid to ask the tough questions, maybe because of Maybe you were taught that way growing up that you just you don't ask the tough questions, right? You don't you don't criticize faith. Well, Jesus invites us to look for deeper answers. Okay, he does that throughout his ministry, uh, and he invites us to essentially love him with our minds. Okay, we we grow deeper in love with God when we pursue him intellectually as well, and you know it's increasingly more important to be able to do that and to have the resources 
to do that, to know where to go, because in the digital age, you're, you're seeing more and more information, more and more ideas from people. You're also seeing more and more people criticize the Christian faith uh, and criticize God's word. So where do we go to defend against those things? Well, here are some resources that you can use. Here's some resources that, that we really trust. Um, sorry, one is, is sort of cut off. I could do this. Um, I'll, I'll blow it up here in a second. So bottom right, answersandgenesis.org. That is a ministry dedicated to defending the word, defending creation theology. And that is a great resource. Um, the book in the middle, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Highly, high, highly recommend that book. Uh, you know, you'll read the first few pages and just be blown away by why the Bible is the word of God with all the evidence they just throw at you right away. It's, it's incredible. Um, CRI, Christian Research Institute, equip.org. That's in the bottom left. It's the red box. Um, tons of great information. A lot of radio shows where the Bible Answer Man goes into depth. Um, and we tend to agree with him 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, but of course, lcms.org, that is our synodical resource. Okay, so that is our theology. And there are a lot of great articles there uh, about some relevant issues and about some, some faith issues, uh, some common Bible questions, etc. Uh, theology. Okay. And then Creation Ministries International, creation.com. Another ministry similar to Answers in Genesis dedicated to defending God's word and defending creation. So all those resources we give you uh, because you're going you're gonna to hear God's word attacked. Okay, You're going to hear God's word criticized. Uh, you're going to hear your faith criticized. Where do you go to defend the faith? Uh, where do you go to build up your faith and your mind? so that you're even prepared in those moments when that happens. Here's just some of those resources. You you guys also know of other resources that are incredible. Um, but if you're someone who has those tough questions, it is okay. And God invites us to dig deeper. And these ministries are all anchored in God's word to help us answer those questions. Okay, so like Nathaniel, uh, we we all know that there, there are many things wrong in this world and we need answers, right? And as... As God's people, we know that Jesus is that answer. And so we are so thankful that Jesus revealed that to us, um, not just through little miracles, but through taking our sins with him to the cross by dying, rising again, uh, appearing to over 500 witnesses, ascending and sending his spirit to start his church and giving us his word, his word that we still have today that's just as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. So we're thankful for all those things, and we're thankful that he's given us tools and ministries that are passionate about defending that word. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning, and we are thankful for what you tell us in your word, but we're thankful for the gift of your word, uh, that we have a resource like that that is so readily available to us. Lord, let us not neglect your word. Let us not take it for granted. We know that uh, many generations did not have the access to your word that we do today. And so let us soak it in and let it be powerful in our lives to powerfully flow out of us in our daily lives as we follow you as members of your kingdom. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. God's blessings on your day. And we'll be live again tomorrow morning. Take care.